Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Doesn't seek the, uh, the medical and rehabilitation services that um, he knows he needs. That's on him. District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry is being granted a sabbatical by fellow council members following a hit and run crash. Why other members say they agreed with the move and what happens to Perry next. And this morning, a University of Virginia student is now in police custody, accused of shooting three football players as they return from a field trip. Now police are revealing what happens next in the investigation. 51 degrees at 430 this morning. Much nicer drive into work this morning without that constant drizzle. Mike will let us know how today and the rest of the week will shape out. Good morning. It's November 15th, Tuesday. Yes, this week is going by pretty fast. Hope you had a good Monday. I know things are improving because you're right. That rain wasn't out there on the drive into work. It was quite nice. And Mike, but then I checked my rain gauge yesterday and it felt like it rained all day long, but it was just like, 1700s officially at the airport. Yeah. yeah. So one thing, uh, the little number there at the bottom of the screen, kind of ignore that. I don't know. Okay. Are we in the 40s? It, we're in the 40s. Yeah. Uh, it may be okay. a little bit. Maybe the cold got to it. <laughs> so but yeah, it, it's Stuck. much colder than that. We got a lot of clear skies. Yes, we're not putting up with what we had yesterday morning at all. It is 42 right now in town. So we are already 10 degrees below normal and we're going to continue to drop down a few more notches this morning. 30s out there in the hill country. Then we've got really, really dry air. So we've got most of the ingredients in place. We've got clear skies, dry air, but we do have a breeze out there, which is actually preventing us from getting colder than what we are. But then with that breeze, you've got a wind chill. So it feels like 38 in town, 28 Bernie stage, as well as Kerrville. Wind chill is 26 in Los Maples as of right now. Wind is out of the north primarily 10, 15, close to 20 miles per hour, 17 mile per hour winds there in Bernie stage, gusting to 20 here in town. So it will be breezier this morning. Still a decent breeze this morning, but stronger winds are still windy this afternoon, pardon me, but stronger winds this morning. Mold is on the moderate side and throughout the rest of today, we will continue to drop down a few degrees. Again, we're not going to get thermometer wise as cold as what we could because the wind keeps the air stirred up instead of allowing that the heaviest, coldest air to settle here to the surface. But you got the wind chill to deal with. So we'll be at 40, but wind chills down in the 30s here in town. And then later on this afternoon, that's it. Only 58. I'm going for mostly sunny skies. We're going to have a few, uh, plenty of high clouds hanging around here, but plenty of sunshine as well. Yeah, 58 degrees. Once again, 10, 15 degrees below normal. It's going to be staying just about like this the next couple of days. Then wait till you see the weekend. Yeah, it'll be one just to hunker down on the couch and watch some good Christmas movies, something like that. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Sarah. Thank you, Mike. This morning, two apartments are damaged and one person is in the hospital after shooting late last night. It happened around 930 on East South Cross near Pecan Valley. That's on the city's southeast side. Police say the victim was shot in the back. So far, there's no word on any arrests. A hit and run crash and a councilman who is open to rehab to, quote, make sure this will never happen again, end quote. District 10 Councilman Clayton Perry is being granted a sabbatical by fellow council members. Perry is accused of running from the scene of a crash. This leaves of his duties does come after an unanimous vote of no confidence against Perry from City Council, except for Perry and Mario Bravo, who abstained from voting. But it came only after most of the council voted to remove the language in its resolution that it would have asked Perry to resign. District 8 Councilman Manny Pelias explained why. I'm taking him at his word today that he is sorry, that he needs this help, doesn't seek the um, the medical and rehabilitation services that um, he knows he needs, that's on him. Now, police body cam video of an encounter with Perry raised concerns of him driving while intoxicated. Last week, San Antonio police told Kasich they would file a DWI charge with the district attorney's office. Now, yesterday afternoon, the DA said that it hadn't happened yet. We have asked the San Antonio Police Department through email where things stand with that potential charge, but we have not heard back. Well, after a nearly 13-hour manhunt, a University of Virginia student is in police custody this morning. As ABC's Andrew Dimbert reports, he is accused of killing three fellow students. Overnight, shock and sadness on the campus of the University of Virginia, where a student is accused of killing three members of the football team. I think that this whole community will forever be changed. It's a lot right now. Um, it's, kind of, it's kind of all very surreal. 
The players were on this bullet-riddled bus returning from a class trip when authorities say Christopher Darnell Jones Jr. opened fire, killing Devin Chandler, Lavelle Davis Jr., and Deshaun Perry. The university police chief learned of Jones's arrest in the middle of a news conference. Just need a moment to thank God. <laughs> we have a sigh of relief. Jones is a former member of the football team. It's unclear why he allegedly opened fire on the bus. The police chief revealed Jones was already on their radar, saying the university's threat assessment team learned about Jones in September after someone said he had boasted about having a gun. The chief also said Jones faced a previous hazing investigation. I don't know the facts and circumstances of that investigation. I know that uh, it was eventually closed uh, due to uh, witnesses that would not cooperate with the process. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Republicans are on the cusp of retaking control of the House, just one victory shy of the 218 seats the party needs to secure a majority. Control of the House would give conservatives leverage to slow down President Joe Biden's agenda and spur a flurry of investigations. But a slim numerical advantage could pose immediate challenges for GOP leaders and complicate the party's ability to govern. The full scope of the party's majority may not be clear for several more days, even weeks, as votes in competitive races are still being counted. Still, the party is on track to achieve 218 with seats in California and other states still too early to call. Leaders of the world's largest economies remain divided over Russia's invasion of Ukraine, but they appear prepared to convey a strong message from most condemning the war. A draft declaration is reiterating the stance expressed in the UN General Assembly's March 2 resolution that deplores in the strongest terms the aggression by the Russian Federation. But the statement also noted there were different views on the situation and sanctions against Russia. It also says G20 was not the forum for resolving security issues. Ukraine's president appealed to fellow leaders to press for an end to the nine-month war that has devastated the country. Or more COVID-19 booster shots could prevent thousands of pediatric hospitalizations and millions of missed school days. That's according to new analysis published by the Commonwealth Fund and the Yale School of Public Health. Researchers found that if COVID-19 booster coverage reached 80 percent among school aged children by the end of the year, more than 50,000 hospitalizations could be avoided. So according to the CDC, fewer than 5 percent of school aged children currently have their updated booster shot. To get to 50% coverage by the end of the year, the pace of vaccination would reportedly have to be at least 10 times faster than it's been up to this point in November. And the time now is 437 and we're in the 40s this morning. All right, not all phone cases are created equal when it comes to protecting your phone. We'll show you which ones work best and which ones are just a waste of your money. And it wasn't the way the San Antonio Spurs wanted to start their West Coast trip. We're going to have some highlights of their loss against Golden State next. Taking a look outside with Transguide. Much easier commute this morning without that constant drizzle. 35 at Alamo. No incidents there. If anything pops up this morning, we'll let you know about it. And taking a look outside with live cam, we're starting your morning in the 40s. Very chilly, pack a jacket, but at least we don't have to deal with the rain on the roadways. We'll be right back. Our San Antonio Spurs kicked off their West Coast road trip last night in Golden State, taking on the reigning champs. Jeremy Sohan got the start at point guard last night for Trey Jones, who's out with a stomach illness. So Sohan helps the Spurs keep pace early in the first quarter, driving inside and flipping it up and in to make it a one-point game. Later in the quarter, Doug McDermott caps a 12-2 San Antonio run with a three, and the Spurs go up 2019. Later in the quarter, off the miss from Devin Vassell, Charles Bassey tips it in to make it a six point game. But the Warriors answer right back, coming down the court. Jordan Poole drains a triple in transition. Now Golden State leads after one. That lead only grew. Now throughout the second half, Keldon Johnson scored 15 points for San Antonio. Johnson has made a three pointer in 30 straight games, the second longest streak in franchise history behind Danny Green, 32 straight in 2012. But in the end, it wasn't enough. So the Spurs fall to the Warriors 132 to 95. San Antonio is now six and eight in the season. The Spurs travel to Portland tonight to take on the Trailblazers. Now the Spurs have won the last four matchups with the Trailblazers and two in a row in Portland. Tip off is set for 9 p.m. San Antonio time.
All right, one of the big games in our big game playoff coverage this Friday night will feature the number one ranked Steel Knights putting their undefeated record on the line on the road against Lake Travis and Pflugerville. The Knights come into the Class 6A Division 1 area playoffs with a perfect 11-0 record. So the Knights opened their playoff run with a convincing victory over Johnson in the by district round on Thursday night. Meanwhile, the Cavaliers are 6-4 overall, 5-2 in the district, coming off their first round playoff win against Round Rock. I feel like it was very important uh, starting off with a strong team um, just to get us ready for what's coming up now. We had a feeling we was going to see them again based on how the brackets were played out. So it was very good to uh, play them first. It was a good physical game that first game. And, you know, both of both of our teams have, have changed a little bit, um, you know, with personnel and, you know, both have gotten better over, you know, the last eight, nine games. So, you know, I expect a battle, you know, come Friday night just like it was week two. We like that hat. All right, kickoff between the Steel Knights and the Lake Travis Cavaliers will be at 7.30 p.m. in Pflugerville. San Antonio FC won their first ever United Soccer League title on Sunday night at Toyota Field by dominating Louisville FC 3-1. It's the second championship under head coach Alan Marcina in San Antonio who won the league championship when they were the San Antonio Scorpions in the NASL. So now it's time to celebrate. So SAFC will be at the Arneson River Theater later this evening starting at 5 p.m. You can cheer them on. Way to finish the fight. All right, it's 444. And no matter what kind of phone you have, you're going to want to protect it after the break. Find out the best phone case to suit your needs. You've probably guessed at this point you're going to have to pay a little more for Thanksgiving this year. We'll tell you how much more and which items will cost the most. Our smartphones are often one of the most expensive items we carry around every day. So you need a good case to protect it, especially if you know you're going to drop it, like me, at uh, some all point. All the time, same. <laughs> 12 on your sides, Marilyn Morris shows us some of the best cases for your money. You paid a pretty penny for that phone, and let's face it, you're going to drop it. So a phone case is a no-brainer. A phone case is the cheapest form of insurance you can buy. Consumer Reports found you can get a good case for less than 30 bucks. Just be sure to look for these features. A raised edge around the front to protect the front screen. Around the camera housing in the back, another raised look. You want it to be like tight fitting with padding on the edges. A bulky case isn't necessarily better. Experts say a slim case that fits your phone snugly will protect just as well. It also helps to pick a durable phone in the first place. Consumer Reports put several to the klutz test. We drop the phone 50 times. We check the phone for any scratches or damage, and then we drop it another 50 times. The best make it out of the tumbler with just a few scuffs. iPhones were tough, as were most Samsungs. Back to choosing a case. Buyer beware knockoffs. Buy from reputable sellers. Be skeptical about online reviews. Many don't tell you how the case stands the test of time. And look for a warranty. For instance, OtterBox and Spec both offer warranty options. And of course, it's an aesthetic purchase too. So if you like zebras or glitter and it's well designed, it's a winner. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. Quick look at the roads with TransGuy looking over at I-35 at Alamo. Things are moving right now. Not too bad. Much better than yesterday. Yeah, sure. lots of lots of incidents on the roadways yesterday, but don't have to deal with it this morning. Just the cold temps out there. Yeah. Right? Yeah, you know, I was just thinking if you drop your phone, Murphy's Law always comes into play. Mm -hmm. That it will, you know, it hit. hit the right I dropped way. one time, slipped yeah. out of my hand. It came down flat on a rock. Oh. oh, just yeah, it couldn't have hit like that or like that, but it was like or, right or the other side. Yeah, yeah, just mm -hmm. perfect on the rock. So yeah. anyway, that's my story. That was <laughs> years ago. Yes, it is very cold out there. This is a great sunset picture came from uh, some viewers over there at our station in uh, Houston. But as you can see, it was great. Yeah, it turned out to be really, really pretty yesterday. Once as expected, once the clouds got on out of here, the rain stuck around through midday, we picked up 17 hundredths of an inch of rain, which is most we've had around here. It seems like in forever. We could obviously still use a lot more, not a lot in the offing, though. 42 here in town, 39 Hondo pair of 35s over there, Kerrville as well as Comfort and 42 at uh, Converse. 
right around Randolph. 38 is the wind chill here in town, 27 in Kerrville. So that's what we're going to have to deal with this morning is all those, those strong blustery winds which have been gusting 25 miles per hour, and that's going to be the case through the first portion of the day. It's still going to be breezy this afternoon, but not as windy. Here's the uh, satellite radar picture going back 24 hours, and we had the rain around yesterday morning. It cleared on out of here. We had a lot of clear skies overnight, allowing temperatures to drop down. Now, as you can see, we do have a few clouds that are moving on in here, so I'm going to lean toward the mostly sunny side, but there will be some clouds hanging around. We'll bottom out at 40 here in town, so we're not going to really get as cold as what we could, as I mentioned off the top of the show, just because that wind is keeping things kind of stirred up around here, but still it is cold. Definitely bundle up, especially for the little ones waiting for a bus uh, this morning. Going to make it up to 52 at noon, and then again, I'm going to lean toward the mostly sunny side. We'll have a lot of high clouds around here. Going to make it up to 58 later on today which is 10 to 15 degrees below normal. Should be right around 70 for a normal high temperature here in town. Now, as far as the humidity, of course, we did have a lot of humidity around yesterday morning, and that's help got squeezed out in the form of rain. Now the humidity has dropped down, and it's going to be staying definitely on the low side all the way through the rest of the week and going into the weekend. Tries to come back up here just a little bit. That's when we have our next chance for some rain. But again, you look at temperatures and we are going to stay 10 to 15 degrees below normal. As a matter of fact, we're going to be more than 20 below normal by Saturday. It's going to be I guess to put it a raw day Saturday, just like it was yesterday morning with those temperatures only in the upper 40s and Low temperatures are going to be staying upper 30s right around 40. Again, a good 10 to 15 degrees below respective normals, except when we get into the uh, first part, first to middle part of next week. So, yeah, definitely living up to November. Love it. 52 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. So at noon, we'll finally be back up to about our normal low temperature after starting off definitely on the cold side. And then only 58, mostly sunny. Still a bit of a breeze out there. A lot of high clouds hanging around going into the next seven days and not much really changes tomorrow and Thursday. A few more clouds around tomorrow and then Friday. A lot of clouds as the next front approaches. That's going to then squeeze out some showers around here. We'll have a better chance for some showers on Saturday. That's going to help to hold temperatures down both. I mean, Saturday, Sunday and even Monday, but especially over the weekend, just going to be kind of a but hang around, hunker down inside with couple extra blankets on the couch. Yeah, just get cozy or maybe do some indoor decorating. Yes, good yeah. idea. So Wednesday, Thursday of this week may be ideal for outdoor decorating. And today. Okay. Yeah. Today, this afternoon, tomorrow, Thursday. Best days. We have time. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. All right, it's 452 in the 40s. Let's look at your winning lotto numbers. Pick three, two, zero, nine, fireball two, daily four, nine, one, three, six, fireball nine. Cash five, three, five, nine, ten, twelve, Texas two step, five, seventeen, twenty two, twenty seven. That bonus ball ten. Powerball nineteen, thirty five, fifty three, fifty four, sixty seven, powerball twenty one, power play two. In this morning's GMA First Look, it's T-minus nine days to the biggest meal of the year. So how can you keep your Thanksgiving budget in check? Everything is more expensive. Feed is more expensive. Labor is more expensive. All the inputs are more expensive. So that obviously is going to translate into a more expensive turkey. Costs are up nearly 17% compared to last year for the holiday's biggest staple, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But there is a silver lining at the checkout counter. Price tags are actually shrinking a little for some of those items or ingredients that may be on your Thanksgiving menu, at least compared to last month. The closer we get to Thanksgiving, the cheaper the prices are going to be. And coming up at 7 a.m., we have more expert money-saving tips. Plus, we're taking you live to a turkey farm. With your GMA First Look, I'm Matt Rivers, ABC News, New York. What a soothing sound. <laughs> of the turkeys. <laughs> it's like seagulls at the beach. <laughs> Can you imagine people waking up in the morning? <laughs> All right, good All right. morning. Good morning. <laughs> Time now, 4.57, and we're in the 40s. All right, Republicans, they're on the cusp of retaking control of the House. Why it's still far short of a, the sweeping victory they had hoped for going into this year's midterm elections. 
and we're going to update you on the next step for the group of people helping to design a brand new elementary school for Uvalde CISD and when it's expected to be finished. RJ Marquez just walked into our studio. He's in for Steven this morning. He's going to give us a look at the roads in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. The initial target to raise for the construction of the new school is around $50 million. Uvalde leaders and community members are establishing plans for a new elementary school. We'll tell you about the next step that has to be taken to get it built. And taking a look outside with live cam, looking a lot better than yesterday, but we are in the 40s. It feels like November. Good morning. It's Tuesday, November 15th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Yes, we hope you had a, a good Monday and survived the rain. I mean, it was kind of rainy through most of the day, but then it actually turned out to be beautiful in some parts. Yeah, right? the, the, the sun came out and I was had to take my jacket off. I was like, oh, this is nice. Yeah, actually got us up into the uh, mid 60s yesterday with some of that uh, sunshine as expected. Things cleared out quite nicely and with those clear skies overnight, that has allowed temperatures to really drop down. Got a couple of clouds here and there in the area that Bottom number dew point is very low, so we've got clear skies, mostly clear skies, very uh, dry air, still a bit of a breeze, so we're not going to get as cold thermometer wise as what we could get this morning, but it still got wind chill to deal with, so you definitely want to grab a scarf again today. 58 for high temperature, that's all we're going to be mustering, so we'll be 10 to 15 degrees below normal all across the area. The aquifer yesterday went up one tenth of a foot, by the way, 17 hundredths of an inch, just shy of two tenths of an inch of rain officially out there at the airport yesterday. Mold is on the moderate side. Of course, the updated count is going to be coming out in just a couple of hours. So wind chills around the area right now. Yeah, it feels like 35 out there at the airport. Feels like 28 Bernie stage 26 is the wind chill in Kerrville as well as Lost Maples 37 over there at Randolph. It's cold because these winds out of the north 10 15 miles per hour and then we do have a few gusts at 21 Bernie stage and gusting to 16 at Bandera 18 Lost Maples. It's going to be windier this morning than what it will be this afternoon even though we'll still have a breeze out there. So a couple of clouds cold windy and then mostly sunny skies a lot of high clouds hanging around here today just the upper 50s. Still breezy, so you're still going to want a jacket on there. And then staying chilly the rest of the week with a few clouds, a few more clouds tomorrow, more sunshine on Thursday. Then we get into Friday as the next front approaches. A lot of clouds on Friday, pretty much just socked in with clouds. And this weekend then is going to be cold and it is going to be wet this weekend. It's going to be one of those just to kind of hunker down extra blanket on the couch and Big glass of hot chocolate, big mug of that stuff. Anyway, details coming up in a couple of minutes. <laughs> Traffic Authority, RJ. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Good morning, Mike. Yeah, definitely felt that way as I got out of bed this morning. Just wanted to stay inside, but uh, had to head out here to the station. As many people are heading out this morning on their Tuesday to get ready for work or school. So things looking pretty smooth right now on Trans Guide US 90 right there at Medio Creek. Looking pretty good there. Traffic moving smoothly through most of the area. I-10 at West Avenue. As we take a look at our big map here. You see a lot of green on our screen. That is a good news so far. Again, it is early. Things expected to pick up throughout the rest of the morning. Now, there was one little incident that TxDOT was reporting, and this is on the uh, northwest side up along I-10, and this is the eastbound lanes of I-10 at Fredericksburg Road. There was a stall reported there, but I was looking at the Trans Guide traffic cameras, and it doesn't seem like there's anything that would be holding up traffic at the moment. As we go back outside there, I-10 at Frio near downtown. Things looking pretty solid there, and let's take a look at one more here. That's I-37 at Houston. Traffic, you see a little bit of a still picture there, but looking pretty good out there. 1604 Petranco. Things looking solid. So far to start your Tuesday morning on the roads. Sarah and Stephanie, back to you guys. Thank you, RJ. The Valdez CISD Moving Forward Foundation and the Community Advisory Committee hosted a community meeting to showcase work they have done on designing a new elementary school. Conceptual designs for the new elementary school were shown, as well as a breakdown of the number of classrooms and safety accommodations. The foundation and committee also agreed on a location for the new school near Dalton Elementary. Fundraising efforts to raise an estimated $15 million are underway. So far, the foundation has raised $18 million. While construction is a way off, community members feel this is a step in the right direction. I think that things are finally coming together. Um, and, it, and it does look like uh, the input has been really positive. 
The next step is for the foundation and committee to present this to the school board at their Wednesday meeting. They will vote on site selection for the canvas and the conceptual design. The hope is to have the school ready by October of 2024. Fierce flames on a cold night. It's what firefighters were dealing with on West Magnolia near Calavetas on the city's west side. Firefighters still don't know what caused the fire at the vacant home, but they did say no one was hurt. Another house behind the fire did take on some damage. Investigators say smoke covered the home, but firefighters were able to handle to get a handle on those flames. New results this morning from the midterm election. ABC News is now projecting a winner on that down to the wire Arizona governor race. As ABC's Justin Finch reports, there are new wins for Republicans getting them closer to a House majority. Thank you. In Arizona, a razor thin race for governor now called. ABC News projecting Democrat Katie Hobbs as the winner. Hobbs tweeting that democracy is worth the wait and that she's honored to serve as Arizona's next governor. Her opponent, Carrie Lake, tweeting, Americans know BS when they see it. In Washington, newly elected members of Congress on Capitol Hill. I feel very comfortable that we will have the majority. ABC News estimating Republicans are ahead of Democrats in the race to a 218-seat House majority. Across the Capitol, Democrats have secured Senate control with wins in Arizona and Nevada. The reason we won, and they know it, the candidates know it, is we focused on things that matter to everyday Americans. Both parties now eager to win Georgia's December runoff Senate race between incumbent Democrat Raphael Warnock and Republican Herschel Walker. Do you believe that Donald Trump should ever be president again? ABC's David Muir interviewing former Vice President Pence ahead of former President Trump's likely 2024 announcement today. The former VP refusing to say if he believes Trump should serve again as president. David, I think that's up to the American people. And Pence not ruling out his own White House run. But we're giving it consideration in our house. Prayerful consideration. With Trump's 2024 re-election launch widely expected today, calls are growing for him to delay that announcement with the Georgia Senate runoff looming and the underperformance of Trump-backed candidates. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. And back here at home, it's going to start looking a lot like Christmas today. San Antonio's official Christmas tree is on the way. So it's coming from Northwest Oregon and is expected to arrive at Travis Park later this morning. HEB says the tree will stand nearly 50 feet tall, will be decorated with 10,000 white lights and dozens of colorful ornaments. It's all for the 38th annual HEB tree lighting celebration. And that kicks off the day after Thanksgiving on November 25th at 3 p.m. I wish we had a tree tracker, like, you know, they do Santa oh, trackers. Yeah, be so cute. Tree tracker. Yeah. Maybe next year. Yeah, that's a long drive. <laughs> yes, it is. All right, it's 507. And it would be the largest layoff in Amazon's history. Why the company is looking to cut 10,000 jobs. And it's Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week, and it's also getting much colder outside. We'll have some easy ways you can help bring warmth to those in our community that need it most. Yes, yeah, definitely colder, especially in the mornings and in the evenings. Right now, we are starting in the 40s. You guys bundle up. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Change is in the air with cooler temperatures. And while many of us enjoy the cooler weather, not everyone is as enthusiastic. So now profits that help the homeless and needy families in our community are stocking up on warm clothing and hats and coats. So if you have gently used winter clothing, agencies like Corazon San Antonio, Haven for Hope and San Ministries can all put them to good use. Haven for Hope encourages people to host their own small scale winter donation drives in their own communities or churches. People like to give this time of year, and so we do receive a lot of donations, and we're grateful for it, but the need is there beyond the holidays um, into January, February, and March. And later today, more than half a dozen local nonprofits will join forces with the city to launch Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. It is meant to help bring food and comfort to those most in need in our community. It's 512 in the 40s. And coming up next, why Jeff Bezos, who has net worth of $124 billion, says he's going to give away the majority of his wealth. Wow. And Google is launching a new Health Connect app. We'll show you how it easily syncs to apps like Peloton and MyFitnessPal. Discover Card could reduce the number of unwanted calls and emails. 
Introducing Discover Online Privacy Protection. Discover will help remove your personal data from 10 popular people search websites. Online privacy protection, free from Discover. With Gold Bond, you can age on your own terms. New Retinol Overnight means the smoothing benefits of retinol are now for your whole body. Plus, fast-working crepe corrector diminishes wrinkled skin in just two days. Gold Bond, champion your skin. Life is what you make of it. Make it beautiful. La vie est belle. The iconic eau de parfum. Lancôme. At Macy's, the fragrance destination. Amazon is reportedly planning to cut about 10,000 jobs as soon as this week. ABC's Rhiannon Alley has the details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, massive layoffs reportedly coming to Amazon. The New York Times says the company is set to cut 10,000 jobs this week, the most in its history. The layoffs will reportedly affect the division responsible for Alexa voice services, as well as retail and human resources. It comes as Amazon founder Jeff Bezos says he plans to give away most of his estimated $124 billion fortune during his lifetime. It's unclear exactly when he will distribute the money. Bezos says the money will be devoted to fighting climate change and other causes. And Google has launched an app to integrate health and fitness data for more than 10 other apps. Google Health Connect will centralize access with your permission. For example, Android users can now sync up and get credit for their Peloton workout on their Weight Watchers app. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. Hi. Hi. Yes. So we want to let you know, usually we have, well, am I pointing the right way? Yeah, the temperature at the bottom of the screen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And now we have to rely on... And you might, because oh, it's, it's not there. No, it's not there. We don't, we don't have it this morning, so that's why we're saying it's, it's in the 40s. Sometimes a little technology. Yeah, don't need a heavy jacket. Well, so. uh, it's cold. Yeah, we'll just okay. do it the easy way. Temperatures are uh, definitely down in the, the 40s as of right now. I'm going to have more on that in just a moment. Yeah, yeah, and people making their way out in the roads this Tuesday morning. It's getting ready to maybe head out into a little bit of the cold there, but uh, things looking pretty smooth right now as we take a look at our TransGuide traffic cameras. That's US 90 there at Couples Road. Things looking solid. And then I-10 at Hackberry as it come back onto the screen here. Let's take a look at one more. Loop 410 at Broadway. Again, traffic moving pretty smooth. Maybe some people taking their, time, taking their time to get out on the roadways this morning. Again, look at our big map here, the wide view of the city, and uh, things looking pretty solid here. A lot of green on the screen, so traffic moving along pretty smoothly in our area. And things are a little bit slower now, so I do want to remind some people of some paving work that's taking place right now in uh, Guadalupe County. So this is out in Seguin, FM 725, one of the major roadways there in and out of Guadalupe County. So this started yesterday and it's going to happen up until November, uh, up until the this Friday actually. So just remember single lane closures both directions 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. So just a heads up there for people in Guadalupe County, the Seguin area. Just uh, keep in mind of this paving work that's taking place on FM 725 there. One other look at Transguide traffic cameras again. Things looking pretty solid out there. Mike, how are things looking today? Very cool. Very good look at this guy. <laughs> Love that. I love that. It's a hat. It's a, yeah, it's a hat. And then don't forget the sunglasses that are on there, too. So <laughs> Nice little hat. Good way to keep warm this morning. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good one. Uh, make sure you scan that QR code and download all your KSAC Connect pictures of your pets and or you all dressed up and bundle up for the cold. We've got some clear skies out there right now, and that has allowed temperatures to drop down into the 30s. 35s, both Comfort, Comfort and Kerrville, 37 Bandera, 41 all around the uh, northern metropolitan area, Port SA, the airport, Converse, and then 39 over there in Helotus. Now, we do have a pretty good breeze out there right now, so we've got wind chill temperatures that are down in the 20s and parts of the hill country, 35 out there at the airport, so definitely bundle up this morning. It's going to be windier first part of the day, still breezy this afternoon, but not as windy. These uh, winds right now, 10, 15 miles per hour, but then we've got a couple of gusts on top of that. 21 Bernie stage and 19 over there in Lost Maples. So temperatures this morning will drop down another degree or so in the next few hours. There are a couple of clouds out there this morning and the wind prevents you, like I said, from getting as cold as what we could get, but uh, 40 is still 
10 to almost 15 below normal and make it up through the 40s. Sort of a mixture of sunshine clouds. A lot of high clouds out there today. I'm going to lean call it mostly sunny skies, but there will be a few of them out there and we are going to make it up to the upper 50s later on today and the wind is going to be like I said there so it's going to be cool enough to keep a jacket on all day long and again the up the temperatures throughout the next week well below normal especially over the weekend we're going to be 20 to almost 25 below normal especially on Saturday and boy it's going to be cloudy it's going to be damp on Saturday as well as Sunday and the low temperatures are also going to be staying well below normal uh, finally once we get into maybe the middle part of next week we'll start to modify just a little bit as far as the uh, low temperatures are concerned but yeah it's still going to stay very chilly and here's the reason why we've got this massive Arctic air which is covering just about the entire country with the exception of the extreme southeast down there in Florida. The only readings coming in in the 60s and 70s as of right now. So a lot of folks well below freezing and even down in the single digits up there in Cutbank, Montana. Now, as far as any rainmakers, there's the low that moved on past, gave us the rain, helped pull in the cooler, drier air. That moves on out of here. We are sort of tranquil middle part of the week. Then another low is going to be developing and sliding on in here. And this is what's going to move across the area and give us the chance for some rain over the weekend. That'll scooch on out. And then it looks like another low wants to try and develop and move on in here for perhaps the middle part of next week. Still long ways off, but right now may have a little bit of uh, maybe kind of damp is going in the middle part of next week. 52 degrees at noon today, partly cloudy skies, high temperature. By the way, that's the normal low temperature already at noon. So going to take take a little bit to get back up the normal low and then nowhere near the normal high later on today. Only 58 with mostly sunny skies, a lot of high clouds. It's going to be on the breezy side about the same thing the next couple of days. A few more clouds around then tomorrow. Partly cloudy skies on Thursday. Plenty of clouds Friday and that'll be the warmest day of the next seven up to 60. Front comes on through here. We're going to have some kind of overrunning situation, which means a lot of clouds hanging around Friday, pretty much socked in over the weekend and some showers, especially on Saturday. Yeah, good day just to kind of stay inside. Grilled cheese and soup day. Yeah, if you wanted to get your Christmas decorations up before Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. next three days, you know, look That'll like be the best option. Yeah. Your outdoor yeah. ones. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. the, the weekend is not really going to be good for especially getting up on a ladder and it's wet. No. Mm -hmm. We'll do the indoor yes. decorations over the weekend. Mm -hmm. Please be safe. Thank you. All right. It's 522. Coming up next, an update on Jay Leno, who was burned in a car fire, plus a first look at the top game award nominees. Take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, two, zero, nine, fireball two, daily four, nine, one, three, six, fireball nine. Cash five, three, five, nine, 10, 12. Texas two step, five, 17, 22, 27, bonus ball 10. And your Powerball numbers, 19, 35, 53, 54, 67, Powerball 21, power play two. Good luck. A longtime comedian and late night host in the hospital. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Gee, okay, that's kind of a surprise. Jay Leno is recovering from burns after a gasoline fire. The comedian and car enthusiast told Variety he was working on a vehicle in his garage when it burst into flames. Leno told the magazine he's okay and needs a week or two to recover. He's reportedly being treated at a burn center in Los Angeles. It was like he t took my voice that day. She said about the investigation into Harvey Weinstein features Jennifer Ely as one of his first public accusers, though he was never charged with assaulting her. Ely says the film illustrates the isolation survivors can feel. It shows even more the courage to, to speak up when you really, you really just have to trust these, the journalists and trust the, the power of, of the word. She said opens in theaters Friday. We follow you on every win. But you don't believe in any of it. And still, I follow. Gamers are following the nominations for the Game Awards 2022. God of War Ragnarok leads the way with 10 nominations. Horizon Forbidden West receives seven nods, as did Elden Ring. All three are up for the top award, Game of the Year. Fans can vote now at the award show's Discord server and at thegameawards.com. The awards are December 8th in Los Angeles. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 
time now, 527, and it's in the 40s. It's in the 40s. All right, between Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, and Mark Zuckerberg, will these tech titans stay among the richest men? Why all three are either losing or giving away millions of dollars right now. And unfortunately, a lot of people will probably be getting sick over the next few months, some with respiratory illnesses. We're gonna tell you the signs that you need to stay home and rest, and when you just need to go to the doctor. Are you ready to eat fresh faster? We'll tell you what's on the menu inside Subway's new vending machine. Former President Trump getting ready for a major announcement later today, why some are not as excited about it following the midterm election results. Let's look out there with live cam. We're starting cold. We're in the 40s. Uh, what will we expect this weather to continue for the rest of the day? We're going to be checking in with Mike pretty soon. Good morning. It's Tuesday, November 14th. 15th. Oh, but 15th. I the, tried. <laughs> the only reason I know is my mother-in-law's birthday. Oh, today. Happy and then, birthday. Thing, yes, I what's remember. Her, what's her name? Uh, Noemi. Noemi, it's Happy her birth birthday. Happy birthday. And it was your mom's birthday two on, days ago. On so Sunday. Your mom and then Yes, wow. so that's why okay. I know these dates know very well. <laughs> big eight zero. <laughs> right. Yes, all big eight. All lumped together, get yeah. all the cards bought at one time, you're all set to go. Yes, so. I mm -hmm. have to remember every year. <laughs> Halfway through the month already. Yes. Mm. Years over before Quick. we know it. Uh, you know what Steph's say. doing? I'm going to call her out. Uh, she was like trying to order her Thanksgiving meal during the break. Oh, wow. <laughs> she was like, oh, is it too late I to go like, crack oh a barrel? Gosh. Oh my gosh, yes, because it's, it's a busy, you know, it's a busy day. Yeah. I want to mm -hmm. make sure everything's taken care of. And yeah. Yeah, it's like, order oh, your turkey sorry, now. Family. Yes, yes, it's a good, good reminder. reminder. Hey, if you want to go shopping, uh, well, the next couple of days, any outdoor activities are going to be better than if you uh, are going to be heading out this weekend because this weekend's going to be. Ooh, oh, that's going to be a tough day to get outside this weekend. Anyway, right now it is uh, it's refreshing when you step outside. It'll wake you up because it's cold out there. We've got temperatures right now in the low 40s, 41 to be exact. Dew points at 31, so very dry air. A lot of clear skies. Just a couple of clouds are hanging around here this morning, but we do have that breeze. And, well, that's what's not allowing the actual thermometer you need to get as cold as it could. But, of course, we've got a wind chill to deal with. 38 in Balverde, 39 Helotus, Bernie Stage at 36 and 30. Uh, 35s up there in Kerrville and Comfort, maybe close to freezing in some of the uh, the low lying outlying areas in your backyard up there in the hill country, and that's definitely going to be the situation tomorrow as well. We're going to be very close to freezing in the hill country. Get dry air in place and wind chill temperatures right now. As 31 is what it feels like in Kerrville, 28 Bernie Stage, 33 Balverde, because we've got winds about 10, 15 miles per hour. Castorville right now, 14 mile per hour winds, and then some gusts on top of that 21 at Bernie stage 12 Bandera and 19 at Lost Maples. It will be windier this morning then later on this afternoon. Still a decent breeze out there. Mold is on the moderate side and throughout the rest of today we are going to make it up to 52 at noon. So just finally back up to the normal low temperature at noon and then we top off at only 58 degrees later on today. So a good 10 to 15 below normal. I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies. A lot of high clouds out there though. About the same the next couple of days then the weekend. Yeah, it's a hunker down inside kind of a weekend. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, yeah, a lot quieter out there this morning than yesterday, right? Oh, a lot quieter, Mike. Yeah, things are looking pretty good right now on the roadways. That Taking a look at our Trans Guide traffic cameras, we'll take a little bit of a look around the city. Loop 410 Broadway, traffic moving very smooth. As we, as we mentioned yesterday, uh, there were slick roads, wet roads out there, but things looking pretty solid this morning for us as people make their way out to either work or school on the Tuesday morning. So I want to take a look here at the bigger map, and then you can see there's one small accident here, but this is off of the highway. This is at Wagner and Zarzamora Street. So just keep in mind uh, that accident right there doesn't seem to be causing any major, major traffic delays, but something to kind of keep notice if you live in that area. Again, that is off the highway, so not too much of a big deal as we head out on your Tuesday and just want to take a look at some of our inbound times. Always want to check it and see how long it'll take people to get to downtown. Bernie to downtown, 24 minutes. We have Bulverde to downtown, 27 minutes. And then out there in New Braunfels to downtown, 25 minutes. So again, green there, that means that traffic is moving along very smoothly as we make our way out this morning. One more look at our Trans Guide traffic cameras, Loop 16 of 4 at Petranco. You can see a still camera shot there, but no major traffic. Again, things looking really nice out there on your Tuesday. And again, if you do see any emergency vehicles, just make sure to pull over to that left-hand lane or the right-hand lane just to give them some time to clear out any sort of stalled vehicle or disabled vehicles on the highway. Sarah, Stephanie, back to you guys.
RJ, thank you. We are following some late breaking news A shooting on the northeast side. San Antonio police have roped off a parking lot in an apartment complex on Fairdale Drive. That's not far from Ritterman Road. Katrina Weber is there with a live report and Katrina, what have you found out? Well, we're still waiting for someone to go on the record with official information, but I can tell you what we have seen. First of all, the obvious, this area roped off here uh, at the Parker Apartments. This is the 6600 block of Fairdale Drive. Police are working here. Uh, they did get a call about a shooting in progress right before five o'clock this morning. As we arrived at the scene, there was an ambulance leaving here in a hurry with police right on its tail. We then saw it head down 35 uh, as if it was heading towards Samsi. Uh, police, again, have not given us any official information, but we've heard that it possibly is a man who was shot. I can tell you we see a pair of uh, tennis shoes right there in the middle of this whole scene with some gloves next to it, gloves that are usually the kind that paramedics would use. We've also seen officers going in and out of an apartment on the back side of one of these buildings. And then uh, a while ago, we saw them bring a man out in handcuffs, place him in the back of one of these patrol cars and then take him out again and lead him right back to the direction from which they came originally. We don't know if he's a suspect. We also have seen uh, police fly over the area with their uh, their helicopter, but so far, again, no official information, only uh, reports of a shooting right before five o'clock this morning and then the scene that we see here. Reporting live on the northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. In your morning headlines, former President Donald Trump is preparing to launch his third campaign for the White House with an announcement tonight. So Trump is looking to move on from some disappointing midterm defeats. The former president had hoped to use the GOP's expected gains in last week's elections as a springboard to win his party's nomination. Instead, Trump now finds himself being blamed by some for backing a series of losing candidates in last week's midterm elections. Google has reached a record $392 million settlement with 40 states, including Texas, over its location tracking practices. The search giant was accused of misleading consumers over those practices. The Coalition of Attorneys General that announced the settlement described it as the largest multi-state privacy settlement in U.S. history. The group claimed Google had been misleading users about location tracking since 2014. As part of the settlement, Google has agreed to be more transparent. Well, the world's population will reach 8 billion people today, representing a milestone in human development before birth rates start to slow. So according to a projection from the United Nations, the unprecedented growth is due to the gradual increase in human lifespan owing to improvements in public health, nutrition, personal hygiene, and medicine. The UN says it will take at least 15 years until the re world reaches 9 billion people. The nation's richest, excuse me, the nations with the highest population growth globally are also those with the lowest income per capita, according to the UN, most of which are located in the sub-Saharan Africa. It's been a rough few months for some of the biggest names in Silicon Valley. As CNN's Amy Kiley reports, Forbes might need to keep revising its list of the world's richest people. We're seeing literally the kind of the unfolding or the implosion of an individual here. Some U.S. tech titans could be moving down the world's richest people list. Elon Musk holds the top spot on the Forbes ranking. He's expected to testify in court this week about his Tesla compensation package. It's worth more than $50 billion and a shareholder is suing over it. On top of that, Musk says Twitter could go bankrupt and it might face other threats, according to this analyst. I wouldn't be surprised if you see the site go down in the next week because at some point, when you keep disparaging people like this, you know, somebody's going to piss in the punch bowl here. Amazon founder Jeff Bezos is the world's fourth richest person. We're building the capacity to be able to give away this money. Just yesterday, he said he'd donate most of his wealth during his lifetime. He stepped down as Amazon CEO last year and now leads the Bezos Earth Fund. It's a 10-year commitment to work on uh, these really big problems that we have on sustainability and conservation and restoration. Finally, last month, Meta reported a 50% drop in its quarterly profits. Forbes reported in September Mark Zuckerberg fell off its list of the 10 richest people in the U.S., let alone the world. All three men predict tougher times ahead for the economy. If we're not in a recession right now, we're likely to be in one very soon. I'm Amy Kiley reporting.
Time now, 539, and we are in the 40s this morning. And do you like classic white bread, wheat, or Italian urban cheese? So many choices for your Subway sandwich. Soon you could choose for yourself thanks to a new vending machine. We'll tell you where you'll be able to find them in just a bit. It's neat, and it's getting colder out there, and that means a lot of people will be getting sick, especially kids. We're gonna tell you when you'll know that it's time to give up on those home remedies and when you should see the doctor. I want a Subway sandwich now. This sounds great. Right? And some chips. <laughs> some chips. And a drink. Maybe a cup of soup to keep warm at 540 this morning. It is a cold one. Grab the jacket, the, the scarf, the, the beanie. Keep warm. Mike will have our forecast when we come back. It's getting colder. That means sooner than later, people, people will be getting sick. CNN's Mandy Gaither has more on the warning signs of serious respiratory illness and when you should seek medical care. Across the U.S., some hospitals filling up as respiratory illnesses continue to spread. But we are seeing high, high levels of RSV, certainly, and our influenza levels are starting to increase. While most kids who get sick this season will recover quickly with home care, some young children may need extra care. Mayo Clinic pediatrician Dr. Angela Mackey says whether medical attention is needed depends on three things. First, how your child is breathing. Are they breathing faster, more shallow, or are they working harder to breathe? If there are any breathing troubles, seek medical care right away. Mackey says to give your sick child medications to reduce fever, which kind will depend on the age of your baby. She says children who are more comfortable will drink more, which is key to keeping them hydrated. They might not nurse as much, they might not take as much via bottle when they're sick but they need to make at least three wet diapers in 24 hours. And finally, Madke says to pay attention to your child's energy level. If the child is difficult to arouse, seek medical attention right away. And when it comes to flu, she says there's one thing we can control. So I would strongly encourage parents to, if they haven't already gotten their child's influenza vaccine this year, to get it scheduled as soon as possible. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. It's 544 in the 40s. And you might soon be able to skip the line at Subway. We're going to tell you what kind of sandwiches you're going to find in their new vending machines. And welcome back. It's 547. So Subway has unveiled a new vending machine filled with pre-made sandwiches. Yay! Yay. <laughs> Subway plans to install the machines at places you might expect, like college campuses, airports, and hospitals. Now, the company claims machines use artificial intelligence to accept verbal orders. The concept of pre-made sandwiches isn't new for Subway. It started selling them at places like casinos, gas stations, and airports back in 2020. Are these made fresh, though, and filled every day? We hope. Yeah. I mean, that's their logo. Eat fresh, right? Well, I would hope it's fresh. I don't know. <laughs> we'll have to try it out. Uh, especially, you know, the sandwich from the gas station, RJ. Oh, yeah. I don't know yeah. if I can do it. Never usually the smartest choice. And these are refrigerated too, right? I hope. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you get sick. With it. Um, I do like Subway, actually, yes. Uh, Multigrain is my uh, bread to go, bread of choice there. Um, but, uh, guys, things uh, looking pretty good out there on the roads this morning. I-10 at Hackberry as we take a look at our trans guide. Traffic cameras, Loop 410 at Broadway. I'm just hungry now, so... <laughs> but there's not much going on on the road, so that is a good thing. As we take a look at uh, our wide map here, and we told you earlier about this accident here on the uh, south side, southeast side, kind of that in, that in between area that was at Wagner and South Zar Zarzamora. Again, it's off the highway, so not too much of an issue taking place in that area right now. Uh, did want to bring your attention to this stall over here on the near northwest side. So this is Loop 410 eastbound at Ingram Road. There's a, a disabled vehicle there. I was taking a look at the trans guide traffic cameras a little bit earlier and uh, it didn't look like there was too much of a backup and you can see from our maps as well as the traffic is moving pretty smooth in that area as well. So again, guys, things pretty quiet out there as people head out on their Tuesday, look at 37 and Houston. Again, not too much happening on the roads this morning. This is good because we do expect things to pick up along the next hour or so. And as guys, yes, Subway, now I, I'm just thinking about food. That's really all I'm thinking What's about. What's your order? Uh, the Italian and a good turkey sandwich. Turkey, mm -hmm. avocado. Oh, those yeah, are good choices. Go sure. What cheese? Yeah. Provolone, American? Provolone, yep. yeah. Provolone cheese. Oh, yeah. I like American. <laughs> well, I like them all, actually, be, if we're being honest here. Both, yeah. <laughs> Both. All the above. Yes. Do provolone and American. Oh, that's a good Extra idea. Extra cheese. Yes. On, a, on a grilled cheese. 
Ooh, grilled good, cheese right? fest. Yeah. By the way, grilled cheese fest is uh, is Saturday. Okay. Oh, gosh, I'm oh, so hungry know. now. Okay, well, no yes. shave November mm -hmm. in full swing as you can see. RJ and Mike, their beards coming in yeah. pretty nice. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. And pretty we've been good, Mike. Yeah. Thank you. That's good. Thank you. That's good. We've been hearing from all our team members here at Kesa, and let's go ahead and hear from photojournalist Ken Huizar. I'm participating again this year in honor of my mom, who uh, it will be six years later in November that she passed away due to cancer. So I know uh, most people have had their family or friends impacted with cancer. So I just figure any little bit will help in funding cancer research. If you can donate, please do. Thanks. Oh, we love Kenny. Yes, thank you for participating. Here's a leaderboard. Mike, you're still in first place. Yay, team gray hair. Team gray hair, yes. <laughs> a good lead there. Mark Austin's number two, Steven in number three, and Jonathan number four. Hey, RJ, looking good. Right in the middle, just hanging out. Oh, wait, out. Have, yeah. you, have you passed Max yet? Uh, no, Max no. is one spot ahead of me. Yeah, so okay. He's got that on me right not now. That I'm, not that I, I'm throwing Max my co-anchor. Yeah. You know? No, no, no. We, we, we were just yesterday, curious. Yesterday, I told Justin I'm right behind you, and then he literally probably donated to himself. I'm not just... No, 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 no. You know what happened? Yeah. We what were, happened? I taught David oh, Sears how to smolder right. on mm -hmm. air, mm -hmm. and then Justin Horn smoldered, ah. and he said he swears right after he smoldered that's and looked trick. right into the camera, mm -hmm. he got a donation. Wow. So that's what you need yes. to do, RJ. So, yeah. Yeah, we need we need to get that that smolder. Can you show us the smolder, please? Oh, here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Can we get a smolder from you, is that, Mike? Is that a smolder? Or just wiping, I don't know what wiping, that was. Yeah, that wiping was, subway out of your You, 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 you know, it's it's like that. <laughs> just, I can't now. It's like trying to yeah. whistle with other yeah, somebody else. I'm laughing right you now. You can't do it. That is hard to do. Uh, do that <laughs> QR code that was on that graphic, and yes. you, you can donate, please. And by the way, we are at last check. We were still number one. You're going to walk in front of the camera, RJ, right there. There you go. <laughs> he wanted to throw it. it. <laughs> but did you notice when he walked past, he was going? 100%. You did that on purpose, didn't you? Exactly what he's doing. He did that little yeah. <laughs> Nice work. <laughs> Accidentally walked in front when he's smoldering. Okay, uh, this is a beautiful view as uh, clouds started to clear on out a little bit yesterday afternoon. It was a beautiful afternoon. We did make it up into the mid-60s, so we warmed up nicely after that very bone-chilling start. Speaking of bone-chilling, it's cold out there. 41 right now, 37 ball Verde, just above freezing Bernie stage as well as Kerrville. So in your backyard, it may actually be below freezing right now. Same thing, lost me maples comfort and then we've got some wind chill to deal with 26 Bernie stage same thing Kerrville and 35 out there at the airport feels like 33 Balverde so yeah decent breeze 10 15 mile per hour winds 12 there in Castroville. In some places, you don't have much of a breeze, and that's what's allowing the heviest, coldest air to settle down here to the surface. Got a 16 mile per hour wind there at Bernie Stage and Lost Maples gusting to 19. Yesterday, as I mentioned, we did hit 66. Kind of an unusual situation. 50s to the east and 70s off to the west. So you started to clear out, as expected, more out in our western counties, and that's why temperatures did get up into the 70s yesterday. And then we, once we finally cleared out, mustered the mid 60s and today everybody's going to be staying on the cooler side only getting up into the uh, upper 50s some low 60s around the area so specifically we'll drop down to 40 degrees over the next uh, couple of hours and then some sunshine mixed in we've got a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning and throughout the day a lot of high clouds later on but we'll still make it up to the upper 50s so not as warm as yesterday just given the fact we do have a much cooler start than we did at this time yesterday morning we had some of that rain hanging around here and again temperatures boy they're definitely going to be staying chilly as we go on in through the rest of the week the weekend and going into thanksgiving week maybe a little bit milder but nothing hot in the long range forecast which is good news 52 degrees today at noon partly cloudy skies high temperatures going to make it up to the upper 50s, mostly sunny, a little bit of a breeze out there. And then tomorrow, Thursday, roughly the same situation. Then we get a front moving in our direction on Friday. That'll be the warmest day, only 60, a lot of clouds. And then it is going to be kind of a raw weekend. Upper 40s, low 50s, and some showers. More after this.
Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the latest on the new midterm results coming in overnight. Another Trump-backed candidate loses, with the former president expected to announce that he's running for a third time. Plus, we have an ABC News exclusive and an interview with former Vice President Mike Pence, what he says about Trump running again. And some new details on the deadly campus shooting at the University of Virginia. The suspect set to face a judge. You're going to see those stories and so much more right here on GMA. Okay, don't forget our KSAC Community Share the Shoes campaign is happening right now. You can donate a new pair of shoes or socks to a child in need. Just take your donation to any of the San Antonio Police substations. You can see those locations right there on your screen through December 16th. That's all for now. It's 557 in just a bit ahead in our next half hour. Actress Christina Applegate gets emotional during her speech for her first public appearance since being diagnosed with MS. Taking a look outside with tra trans guide. Not a lot happening. Not a lot of incidents happening on the road this morning. RJ Marquez in for our Stephen Cavazos. He'll have a look at traffic and of course Mike will have our forecast when we come back. Ahead this hour, one person is in the hospital and another is on the run after a shooting on the southeast side. We're going to tell you what police know so far. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, you think I would need one. Oh, yeah. job. Oh, job. Yeah. Oh, you hate to see that. All right, a rough night for our silver and black while they're in California. They fall to the high-powered Golden State Warriors. We have a recap and a look ahead to the Spurs next game. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, we're starting in the 40s, nice and cool for those of you who like the colder weather. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. Happy Tuesday morning. It's November 15th. So excited to be on the desk with Steph this yeah, morning. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we, yeah, we've been having lots of conversations about Thanksgiving and uh, we, no shade November, smolder. Smolder. We'll, we'll get into it later. <laughs> we've, been, we've been teaching all the men what a smolder means. Seems to be working with the donation. It, it works yeah. because we get a guy to smolder on camera. Their donations get bumped up. So my question is because the, the gentlemen that have, have smoldered are actually doing this. Do you have to actually have your hand at your chin or can you just do that, the... You know, that's a preference. The, mm -hmm. what, you know, that, oh, that how do you works, feel? So. What makes you feel more confident? I think a smolder is like what makes a man feel confident. That's like their confident look, you know? Yeah. So it could go either way. So go ahead, Mike. See, now, I can, again, it's <laughs> like trying to listen to somebody else. <laughs> now she's talking about I can't do it. I'm like, <laughs> just putting him on the spot. That's okay. Mike's in the lead. <laughs> <He's>, he, he, <laughs> is, <laughs> but he doesn't the, need a smolder. The, smolder, the, <laughs> the, the, the smolders and the ember anyway. What I, so, see, they're smolders, and I'd say I'm the ash left over after the smolder with the gray. Yeah. So, yeah. Come on, team gray here. We don't need a smolder. We just need, yeah, go for it. It's 40 right now here in town. 34 Bernie Stage Comfort as well as Kerrville. So your backyard may be below freezing as of right now. 38 in Helotus, 37 in Valverde. And we do have a wind chill to deal with right now. It's fairly decent breeze out there. 28 in Bernie Stage, 26 is what it feels like at Kerrville. And 35 out there at the airport, Port SA, as well as Randolph. And it feels like 33 in Valverde, as well as New Braunfels. Winds, uh, there's not a lot out there, but again, these cold temperatures doesn't take much. We're gusts to 16 in Kerrville, 19 lost maples, and mold is on the moderate side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half. And throughout the rest of the morning, we are we're not going to drop down too much more from where we are. In it where we are right now because of the breeze out there doesn't allow the heaviest coolest air to settle down here to the surface if you have no wind at all that's when you get the coldest temperatures but of course we have that wind chill to deal with so We'll see some sunshine. There are a couple of uh, clouds hanging around here, and we'll see a few of them here and there. A lot of high clouds throughout the day. We're going to make it up through the upper 40s and get up to 52 degrees by noon. Then we're going to be topping off at 58 later on this afternoon. I'm going to call it mostly sunny skies. A lot of high clouds out there, but still a nice looking day. Next couple of days, just about the same thing. Then we get into Friday and the weekend. Got another front coming on in here, and it's going to bring some rain with it, and it's going to be a cold rain. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, RJ Marquez, what's going on, sir? 
All right, Mike, not too much going on, on the roads. Not sure if people uh, stayed up late to watch that Spurs game. Hopefully that was not the case because that was not a, a fun night for the silver and black. But uh, we're going to take you out to this one incident that I've been following throughout the morning. This is at uh, Loop 410 and Ingram North, our trans guy traffic camera. And there's reports of a stalled vehicle there. But as you can see, traffic still moving along pretty smooth in that area as we take a look at our traffic flow now from our maps again the eastbound lanes of loop 410 at ingram road right next to ingram park mall again nothing nothing major to show as far as any sort of delays in that area but again if you see those emergency vehicles just make sure to pull over and give them room to do what they have to do out there all right bird's eye view of things going on across the cities you could see again maybe people just getting a little bit of a later start this morning this one accident again is off the highway that's at wagner and south zarzamoro so nothing major to show for there as we go back outside and again this is our only thing that we're following this morning things pretty quiet out there Sarah and Stephanie back to you guys Thank you, RJ. San Antonio police are keeping a close eye on a northeast side neighborhood, which was the site of a shooting a little more than an hour ago. So they roped off part of an apartment complex on Fairdale Drive near Riddiman Road and I-35. Katrina Weber is live at the scene. Now, Katrina, we understand you've learned some new information about the shooting. Well, that's right. Uh, just a little while ago, got a chance to talk to the sergeant here, and he confirmed it's a 25-year-old man who was shot, hit in his stomach and also in his arm by gunfire right before 5 o'clock this morning. Now, since then, police have had this area roped off. They're working here at the Parker Apartment Homes. And as you can see, right there in the middle are a pair of shoes uh, that we believe are the victim's shoes, right next to a paramedic glove. So it appears that's where they were able to work on him. Police also have some markers on the ground where they have found evidence. Now they have been going around this apartment complex. Uh, they, we saw them going in and out of one unit in particular. We also saw them come out with a man in handcuffs. They told us that this is all part of their sweep that they've been doing uh, sort of for safety purposes, someone that they had dealt with before who they have in custody. But for now, he is not connected to the shooting this morning. They're still looking for the shooter who they describe as wearing a red hoodie and having dreadlocks. Police also had their helicopter up as they searched this area, but so far they have not made any arrests. They say the man who was shot uh, is stable. These are non-life-threatening wounds, but again, he was hit in his stomach and his arm by someone who shot him apparently during some sort of an argument. Reporting live on the Northeast side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. A lot of questions this morning after a shooting at an apartment complex last night. So this happened around 930 on East South Cross near Pecan Valley. Details are limited at this time. However, police tell us one person is in the hospital after being shot in the back. Two apartment units were also hit by gunfire, but there are no reports of any other injuries. So far, no one has been arrested. Firefighters still trying to figure out what sparked a blaze at a west side home. It happened last night on West Magnolia near Calavetas. Crews had their hands full with those flames. Fortunately, no one was hurt. Another house behind the fire did take on some damage as well. And change is in the air. You can feel it. It's chilly outside. And while many of us enjoy the cooler weather, not everyone is as enthusiastic. Nonprofits that help the homeless and needy families in our community are stocking up on warm clothing and hats and coats. If you have gently used winter clothing, agencies like Corazon San Antonio, Haven for Hope, and San Ministries can all put them to good use. Haven for Hope encourages people to host their own small-scale winter donation drives in their own communities or churches. People like to give this time of year and so we do receive a lot of donations and we're grateful for it, but the need is there beyond the holidays um, into January, February and March. So the more that we can have on hand and have available, the better. Later today, more than half a dozen local nonprofits will join forces with the city to launch Hunger and Homelessness Awareness Week. It is meant to help bring food and comfort to the most need in our community. Some other top stories we're following for you this morning. Republicans are on the cusp of retaking control of the House, just one victory shy of the 218 seats the party needs to secure a majority.
Control of the House would give conservatives leverage to slow down President Joe Biden's agenda and spur a flurry of investigations. But a slim numerical advantage could pose immediate challenges for GOP leaders and complicate the party's ability to govern. The full scope of the party's majority may not be clear for several more days or weeks as votes in competitive races are still being counted. Still, the party is on track to achieve 218 with seats in California and other states still too early to call. In your morning consumer headlines, interest rates still almost certain to go up again when the Federal Reserve meets next month, but maybe not quite as fast. Fed Vice Chair Leah Brainerd, speaking on Monday, indicated the Fed may be eyeing a half-point hike following four straight hikes of three-quarters of a point. Forty states have now agreed to settle an investigation over Google's location tracking for over $390 million. The investigation started after an Associated Press report back in 2018 showed that Google kept information on where people had been, even if they had disabled that in their phone. Six airlines have now agreed to refund more than $600 million to travelers whose trips were changed or canceled during the pandemic. The Department of Transportation also fining the airlines $7 million. And your GMA first look Thanksgiving dinner is going to cost you more this year. Prices are up nearly 17% compared to last year, but there are some ways you can save money. Look for that story and more coming up at 7 a.m. right here on KSAT 12. It's going to start looking a little more like Christmas today. That's because San Antonio's official Christmas tree is on the way, and it's coming all the way from Oregon in the Pacific Northwest, and it should arrive at Travis Park later this morning. Yeah, HEB says the tree will stand nearly 50 feet tall and will be decorated with 10,000 white lights and dozens of colorful ornaments. It's all for the 30th annual HEB tree lighting celebration. It kicks off the day after Thanksgiving on November 25th at 3 p.m. Love to see that. All right, it's 610 and in the 40s. And coming up much more, including the new developments at the University of Virginia after a gunman killed three of his fellow students. That's coming up a little later on GMSA. And just ahead after the break, Christina Applegate making her first appearance since the actress was diagnosed with MS. You won't want to miss her emotional speech on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. And it feels like November out there. Taking a look outside with live cam if you're a fan of the cold weather. Yay, it, we're in the 40s, uh, but it will warm up for a nicer day. We'll be right back.